So, it's 2020, and there are a lot of new cameras out there. In 2012, Canon released their first sub $10,000 cinema camera, the Canon C100. There were rave reviews when it was first released, and both professionals and prosumers have been loving this workhorse of a camera ever since. So now it's 2020, almost 10 years later. So is the C100 still worth considering and even getting? Well, let's talk about it. Now it's no secret that Canon has some of the best and most expensive cameras and equipment for what you get, compared to some of the other offerings from companies like Blackmagic and Sony. Back when the C100 first came out, it was between seven dollars and $8,000 depending on what vendor you got it from, and nowadays you can get it for around $2,000 or even less sometimes if it's on sale or it has a lightning deal. So that is still a premium price, so is it still worth it for an eight-year-old camera? We've used it to shoot over a thousand commercials and ads, and it's never failed us. Check out most of the client videos on our channel, since we haven't gotten around to uploading some of our new commercials that we've made with our C200 yet. So this is definitely a review long in the making. When we got the C100, we were still building up our production company, but we needed to get a new camera to help take on the new higher workload that we were getting. And at the time, we didn't have seven grand to just drop on a camera. But thankfully, and a lot of people don't know this, but Canon does offer 18 month 0% financing for some of their bigger cameras. And that's what we ended up doing. Canon offers these kind of financing options through their dealers, which is a great option if you want a new camera and want to make payments rather than paying all up front. Plus, if you buy it this way, you can get their really good drop and damage insurance while you're under financing with them for just a little bit more. One of the major pros about the C100, if not the biggest pro, is the audio interface. It comes with two XLR ports, which deliver high quality sound. Now we were using DSLRs before we got the C100, so we always had to either use the microphone jack or we had to record external audio, which we had to sync later, and both of them didn't give us the best results. And now after shooting with XLRs built in with the camera, it's really hard to go back to anything else. Now it may not seem like a big or important feature considering that the camera doesn't shoot 4K, but since audio is so insanely important, it really is a good feature. One thing that I heard is when you're showing somebody a video or film, they can forgive resolution, bad camera work, or even lighting, but if there's bad audio, it really takes them out of the viewing experience. One of the other things that we love about the C100 is the dual SD card recording. I can't tell you how many times our butts have been saved by being able to go to our backup card and retrieve some footage we thought we backed up. Now a lot of people do use the dual SD card recording slots for overlay recording. So if you're recording something really long and it fills up the SD card, it'll just jump to the next one to keep recording. But honestly, we've never used that feature because the camera is actually really good at efficiently storing the footage. And one of the biggest things we got spoiled by with the C100 was the introduction of Canon's dual pixel autofocus. This is one of the first cameras to have it, and let's just say it's really hard to pull focus manually after you've been using Canon's dual pixel autofocus for a while. Now I know I probably sound like a Canon fanboy when I talk about the autofocus, but I go to NAB and Cinegear every year, and I'm always interested to visit the other camera companies' booths that are sporting their new autofocus or their better autofocus, and I usually try them all or I have them demonstrate them to me, and they're either not very good or they're just subpar. I mean, the only real problem I had with the C100 for the price was the resolution. Since when I got it, 4K cameras were starting to make their way into the scene at a similar price. So other than that, do I think the Canon C100 is worth it in 2020? Well, if you want a workhorse of a camera with great audio, great autofocus, great battery life, dual slot recording, then yeah, I think so. As long as you can get past it not being able to shoot in 4K and just shooting in 1080p. And like I said, we've shot over a thousand commercials on one single C100 without having to trade it in or get another one. And even though we have a C200 now, which is our A camera, we still actually use our C100 either as a B camera or to take it out to do some location shooting if we don't feel like lugging our big C200 rig. Now I think $2,000 still might be a little bit too much for the camera at this point, so I might wait a little bit longer to see if the price might come down, or just wait for it to go on sale or watch for a lightning deal. Thanks for watching, and if you have a Canon C100 or you've used one, let me know what you think. Catch you on the next one.